Hi everyone and welcome to the Stitch Sessions. This week we are diving into some cute quick crochet and that is going to be these really fun crochet dice or cube toys. I call them dice because I'm I made them as a sweet little decor embellishment for a child's room. But you can make this as a toy for a child or a pet or even just for something fun to create something a little bit outside of the box with your crochet craft. Now, despite what you might think, if you're a beginner, this project actually is very beginner friendly. So if you only know something a very basic like a single crochet stitch, you're gonna be amazed at how you are gonna be able to create this cube. So I'm really looking forward to taking you through this. If you're a more experienced crocheter, maybe this is gonna be a project that's just kind of taking you a little outside the box and a little something different to work on. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure that you guys do so. I upload a new tutorial every Wednesday, and this way you'll stay up to date every time I do that. And of course, I always enjoy having you guys come along on my crochet journey. So make sure you do that. And also check out our website, which is crochetcrafty.com. We've got all kinds of neat uh, activities going on, like in-person classes, interactive online classes, and uh, much more. Now, in the meantime, let's get cooking. Let's get started on creating our crochet cubes. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so in order to make your dice, so I've got this first one already made, and um, it's got a little tail here because I'm going to use that to attach it to the other. So as you can see, I've just used a bunch of um, leftover scrap cotton yarn that I had lying around, and uh, it's actually, I kind of like how it looks, and I've stuffed it with... Um, a bunch of old socks. So anytime I lose socks or they just become too worn, I wash them and I save them for things like this for stuffing. And so it just gives it a little bit more substance and fills it out much nicer than sometimes polyfill, which you have to use much more of. That's what my first one looks like. I've gone ahead and made um, a couple of squares for the smallest one. And I'm just going to explain in a minute kind of the differences in stitches, etc. But so for this, you'll need um, a variety of scrap yarn. Like I said, I was trying to go through most of my cotton scrap yarn. And frankly, for projects like this, I actually really prefer cotton. It's just such a much more durable yarn, uh, especially if uh, kids or animals are going to be involved in using this. So that's what I've used. You can use whatever selected yarn you like. If you are indeed um, going to use it um, as a, a decor piece or something like that, like you can use any yarn whatsoever. Okay, so that's what I did for, that's what I used for yarn. And uh, for this project, a hook that I used is a 4.5 millimeter hook because again, I was using the cotton yarn. They generally call for a five millimeter hook, but I wanted my stitches to sit a little tighter. Sorry guys, the camera's going in and out of focus. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create six squares, which is exactly what I did in this project. Now, some people would work one long strip all the way around and then make the top and the bottom squares separate. Um, I'm trying to make this as beginner friendly as possible, just to keep it super simple for now. And so that is why I made my six squares individually. So for this project, I made my six squares on their own. So you can see there, I was just, 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 just at the tail end of this skein of um, cotton yarn, which I absolutely love this color, which I believe it was called cotton candy or something really cute and sweet like that. You're also going to need, as usual, a pair of scissors and a darning needle for sewing this all together. You will also need a bit of filling. And like I said, I've used um, old socks in this one. Because this one is super tiny, 
Um, you can actually use a bunch of polyfill if you've got some. I've actually got a bunch of this leftover felt from another project. So I'm just going to take a bunch of this and stuff it in here, which it's not going to take me very much. So let's get started. It's important to know how many stitches we are doing for this. So it's important to remember to keep your stitch count exactly the same for each square. So for this larger cube, I did 10 stitches across and 10 rows up. I'm using the single crochet stitch, so they're relatively equal in size as they are in width. So for this project, what I did is instead of 10 stitches, I only used five stitches across and five rows up. For the medium sized cube in this um, grouping, I will most likely use seven stitches across and seven rows up. So this one's 10, this one's five, and the medium one I would do seven. So in order to make our square, I'm gonna use, so I have a little bit of this um, leftover cotton yarn, and basically I managed to get through five of these squares and I ran out of yarn. So I am going to incorporate this blue yarn into the project, and I'm not too bothered about it because the larger square, as you noticed, was basically a patchwork of different colors. So here we go. So you're going to begin with a slip knot. And I'm just trying to start. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain six. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want the width of our cube to have five. So I've done one, two, three four, five, and then we're going to chain one more so that we can begin our work going back across. So once you've got six chains, I hope you can see that guys, um, in, the, in the second chain from the hook, one, two, we are going to do a single crochet. So you're going to insert your hook. It's just going to be a little bit snug, so just take your time and you're going to do a single crochet, okay? What we're going to do into each of these chains is one single crochet into each. So into the next chain, I'm going to insert and into the next chain. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way to the end. Oops. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. So you have one, two, three, four, five. That's why that chain one was there. Five stitches. So this is the width you want to maintain. You'll now chain one, turn our work, and now you're going to go into the next stitch. So remember that this space here, which looks like the very first stitch, is actually the base of that chain one, which counts as a single crochet. So we want to skip that and go into the next one and single crochet there. Okay, and then we'll go into the next one. So technically we have three stitches done, right? So you have one, two, and then that chain one counts as three. So the next stitch would be the fourth. And then the next stitch, which is actually that chain one, so it's gonna sometimes can be funny to find. It's right there, there's the top loop. So I'm just gonna gently help it through. There we go. And that's our fifth single crochet. Okay, so you can see it's starting to take shape. Then we will chain one, turn our work, and repeat it. So this is basically it to make your squares. So you're going to do this now. So we've done two rows. You're going to do this for three more rows. Okay. So go ahead and do that. And then we will continue from there. 
Okay guys, so there we go. We finished our square. So we have five, five stitches across and five rows up. Okay, so now we're going to put our cube together. So, sorry, after you've made this one, you need to make five more of these. So just keep that in mind. I've gone ahead and already done my five. So because this one is a bit of an odd man out, I'm going to leave this as one of the squares that I put on the top or bottom. So I'm going to set that aside for now. So what I want to do is I want to uh, attach four of these together. So they'll kind of create a box shape just like that. Okay, I know it, it doesn't look like anything right now because it is not sitting still. So the main thing you want to keep in mind for now, just to make your life easier, is to find the tops and or bottom of your squares where you can see the stitches clearly. See here, this is the side of the stitches. For now, I want to work with the tops and bottoms just to make things a little easier. So this was the bottom of mine here, because that's where I did the chain. And you can see that's where I ended off. So I'm just going to place these two side by side. Now you can have them with the tails together or not together. It actually doesn't make a difference because they look fairly the same on either side. So I'll just separate those just to make things a little easier. And then what I'm going to do is, I, luckily, although I ran completely out of all of my cotton yarn, I managed to find a little wee bit of this leftover yarn. So I was super excited about that. So how we're going to attach these together is by slip stitching them. Okay, so we're going to start with a slip knot. And then once I've aligned this square nicely, so meaning each of these stitches are going to match up. So I can see here, this is the first one. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert my hook there. And I want to make sure this is a knot. So that is not, <laughs> this knot is not a stitch. So one, two, three, four, and five. See that, that was the chain one. This would be really easy to miss. So you have to really make sure, start from the side where you can see the stitches clearly and count your way back. So this is my fifth chain or my first one. So I'm just gonna insert in there. And now I know that these square blocks are aligned evenly. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to slip stitch to join all of this together. Be careful not to split my yarn. And essentially, I'm gonna slip stitch all the way across. So there we go, that's my first one. Now what I would do is simply go into the very next stitch, which is this one right here. Yeah, just wanna make sure. So that's the second one. And now I'm gonna find the second stitch of this one, which is right here, whoops can get pretty tight, so just have to finagle your way in. There we go. Then I'll pull through and pull through again. So I'm going to slip stitch that all the way across. So here's my next stitch here, that's the third one. Now my stitches are easier to find, okay? Sorry about all the tails, guys. I actually, when you're working on a project this small, I would actually recommend you sewing all your tails in. Even though you can tuck it in, it's just that they can be very distracting. So that's what I would recommend for future. So I'm gonna pull that there. So, we've got, so now you're just gonna go ahead and slip stitch to the end. Once you do that, I want you to fasten off and snip your yarn and fasten off. And I'm just coming to my last one here. So that's my fifth one. And I'm just gonna pull that out a little bit. I'm gonna snip off my yarn. And just fasten off. So I'll pull this through. Just like that. 
So now you can really see, just pull that out of the way. Now you can really see the effect that slip stitching this gives you. I purposely wanted each corner to stand out. Now with the other one, with the larger cube that I showed you, you don't really see this ridge. And the technique I used is that I kept the ridge on the inside. And now, so it gives you a bit of a smoother look. For the smaller ones, because they are so small, I actually would like the corners to be much more pronounced. So when you slip stitch, it will look like this on one side where you can see the stitches. And on the other side, you'll just see where the yarn uh, goes in. And in fact, this one blends right in because it's a variegated yarn. But when you open it up like that, see, it creates this really cool ridge. You are going to do these this technique for four of your squares. So then I would take the next one and I would attach it here. Okay, so see, now you can already see how it's going to start to shape into a square. Then I would take my fourth one and attach it here. So essentially what we're doing first is we are sealing off all four sides. Now, like I said, I think I'm going to, before I continue on, I'm going to go ahead and weave my ends in just to get them out of my way and um, to keep things a little bit easier to see. So I will come back with another side and once I've weaved in all my ends and then we'll do the top, stuff it in the bottom and you are good to go. And here we have it. So I've now slip stitched all four sides together. So your cube is looking something like this. I've got most of my short tails on the inside there. So you can see each corner has created a little ridge. Okay. Okay guys, so since this is a much smaller cube than the first one I made, it's pretty tight. The sides of the stitches are tight. The stitches themselves are tight. So now that I've managed to slip stitch the edges, the corners here, which I like, I am going to whip stitch the top and the bottom. It just makes life a little easier. So I've got this piece here that just had a little bit of tail left over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed it through to lock it in place. And I'm going to feed a, the end here through a darning needle. And we will sew up the top part of our box. There we go. So you just place it on top like a lid and find any corner to start. Make sure that any tails that you have left there get pushed to the inside. And I am gonna sew this with the right sides facing out just because it is so small. So now what I wanna do is I wanna just pick up a loop somewhere in the corner there of the box, right there, and pull through so that I can secure my top there. There we go. So now it's kind of sitting nicely in line with my sides. Okay. Sorry guys, I realized this, I should have shown you how I did the bigger one. The smaller one can just be a little bit testy. Okay. So now you're just going to proceed to find a loop as best you can and feed it through and then pick up another one in the front edge. Then you're going to pull it through. Okay, and then just pull it snug, but not too tight. You don't want your um, your work to start to buckle. And I'll go ahead again, and I'll try and pick up a loop back here and find another one fairly close in the front there and pu push through and feed it through. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. So I'm just going to find that little loop there. I'm going to match it up with this one here. Okay. There we go. So you can see it coming through. And then I'm just going to feed it through. Oops. And just snugly pull it. 
Okay, so this is what basically it. This is what you're going to do all the way around. Just find a little loop. It can be a little tricky. Feed it from the back to the front or from the front to the back, whatever works best for you. And you're going to do this all the way around until the top part is sealed in. So there you can see my tails sneaking out. So, oops, let me pull that in. Okay, so essentially this will sit here and create the bottom part of our little cube. So go ahead and do that. I will meet you once you've sealed up the end and we'll talk about the stuffing and how to do the top. Okay, so our little cube is now coming together. Okay, so I've just come up to the end and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to feed this towards the inside and then just maybe see how tight this is. Just maybe do a couple back and forth just to create a bit of a knot and then we are ready to go. There we go. Okay, super cute. I'm loving it. So I'm just going to snip my yarn here. Got some of my ends tucked in there. So you can stuff this with anything. I like to save old socks and t-shirts and things like that. And in fact, I have this teeny tiny little bit of this lilac -y polyester yarn that I cannot think of one single thing I'm going to use this for except for inserting perfectly in there. So that's what I'm going to use to stuff my cube. And now the last block, which is right here, the last of my cotton scrap yarn was right here. And this is the block that I'm going to place on top. Now, I just made it. So it's actually not exactly the same size as the others. So most likely I may just keep that on the bottom or what have you. But um, it just fits perfectly enough that I can certainly whip stitch this together. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did on the bottom. I'm going to do that on the top. Um, I am going to continue to use my white yarn. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to place it on top. I'm going to try my best to, sorry guys, sometimes I forget myself, make sure that all my ends are tucked in, just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to find a loop and then just come up through the corresponding loop. It could be an actual stitch or it could be the side of a stitch. Whoops. There you go. I got all excited. Doesn't really matter as long as you get it. So I'm just going to tie this. I'm going to knot it and then tuck it inside cube. Oops. Okay. So now I just continue on whip stitching from one loop, oops, to the back. There we go. I just pull it through and I do this all the way around. And once you get all four corners done or all four sides, your little cube is finito. And we are done, guys. Here is our little cube finished and stuffed. And the last part on the top, which I actually like the way it came out. Kind of looks very, um, well, it looks homemade, which is what I love about it. 
Okay, so we've whip stitched up around here. I just, I went through a couple of extra times here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, just to kind of give it a little bit more fortification. Now sometimes what I like to do is I kind of like to just push it in through and then out. And then I don't pull it too snug because I don't want it to buckle, but this is just kind of an insurance of kind of keeping it um, secured so that it won't unravel. So again, I don't want to pull it too tight. Just enough to let the yarn get lost. And I try to keep it close to the edges and the corners just to make it easier. And that's it. And I'll probably do that one more time just to kind of bury it through the side here. And that's it. Now you can snip this off. I'm going to leave mine because just like the other one, I want to be able to let it dangle just like that. I love it. Super cute. It's great for a cute little add-on to a children's toy or an accessory. Um, so we have our sweet little crocheted fuzzy dice, as I call it. Um, so this is the smaller version here using five stitches on each side. Pretty sweet. I hope you guys have had fun making this sweet little project along with me. Um, make sure if you have any questions, I know this one particularly could be a little tough to see because it was smaller. So please do feel free to drop me a comment in the comment box uh, below if there are any finer points that maybe you feel I missed. Um, and as always, you can email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode when we upload our new tutorials every Wednesday. So in the meantime, everyone, have a great day and happy crocheting. Take care.